All right, hi there everyone. This is Grammar Lecture 9. There are two parts in this lecture. The first focuses on tense consistency, so being uh, consistent in the way we use tense in sentences and paragraphs. And then the second part of this lecture talks about consistency between singulars and plurals. And specifically that second part of the lecture um, focuses on when we will use is versus are. There are other forms like was and were, um, but we're gonna focus on is and are specifically in the second half of the lecture. So to start with tense. So tense is referring to the time in which something in writing is taking place. So we have <clears throat> three Three focal tenses, there are more tenses than, than these and they can become quite complex, but these are the three that we'll focus on for the purposes of this lesson. So we have past tense, present tense, and future tense. <clears throat> past tense refers to things that have happened in the past, they've happened prior to now. So an example here, um, a sentence using past tense, Marla bought apples at the grocery store. So we have bought, which indicates past tense. Marla bought, we know, happened in the past. It happened prior to now, so that's past tense. Then we have present tense, things that are happening now. And you can see this um, ing endings are good signifiers for, uh, for present tense. So now we have Marla is buying apples at the grocery store. Marla is in the process of buying these apples. She's doing it now. That signifies present tense. Then we have future tense, things that will be happening in the future. Um, it doesn't matter how far into the future, whether it's in five minutes or five years or five decades, all of that is considered future tense. So we have Marla will buy apples in the grocery store. That signifies future tense. So, Tense consistency is important because our readers become very easily confused when we switch between tenses uh, within sentences and even within paragraphs. So we want to make sure that the reader is clear about, are we talking about something that has already happened, is happening right now, or will happen in the future? Um, and so we'll go through some editing exercises within this lecture that will help you clue in to when you might be switching tense within a sentence. So if we start telling a story using past tense, we might lose the reader if we start using present tense as we continue telling the story. Um, when we use things like flashbacks uh, in, in writing, particularly creative writing, we just need to make sure that we're clear to the reader that, okay, now we're looking backward. We're using past tense to talk about things that have already happened, or we're, we are remembering things that happened in the past. If we're doing flash forwards, if we're talking about things that are um, going to happen, then we know that we're using future tense. We just have to make sure that we're not confusing it and using many different tenses, both within sentences and even within paragraphs. So here is a paragraph, and I'd like for you to find the inconsistencies in tense. So I'll read this aloud so you can follow along. Today was the best day of my life. I bought a new car. I was looking forward to this day for a long time. The car that I wanted is waiting for me when I had pulled up. I ran to it, looked inside, and will get a salesman to help me. I was able to drive the car around the neighborhood, and I discovered that I had to have it. I will talk to the salesman and convince him to give me a good price. I am happy as I drive away from the dealership in my new Corvette. So we'll look at this sentence by sentence. So today was the best day of my life. Was is past tense. I bought a new car, also past tense. So we're seeing consistency so far. I was, more past tense, looking forward to this day for a long time. Good. So the first three sentences are all in past tense. The car that I wanted, past tense, is waiting. Here's present tense. So here's the first item that we might adjust in this sentence. The car that I wanted, past tense, is waiting, present tense, for me when I had pulled up, past tense. So we could change waiting for me is waiting for me and make that past tense to maintain that consistency. I ran to it, back to past tense, looked inside, past tense, and will get, that's future tense. So we would change will get to got. I got a salesman to help me. I ran to it, looked inside, and got a salesman to help me. I was able, past tense, to drive the car around the neighborhood, and I discovered, past tense, that I had to have it. I will talk, that's future tense, 
to the salesman and convince him to give me a good price. So we have future tense and will convince would also be future tense. So we could change this to past tense by saying, I talked, and that makes it clear to the reader that this happened in the past to the salesman and convinced him. So that would also make this past tense to give me a good price. I am happy, present tense, as I drive, present tense, away from the dealership in my new Corvette. So we could say, I was happy as I drove away from the dealership in my new Corvette. So those changes would create consistency in tense in this paragraph by switching those items that were in future tense or present tense into past tense. So we could have written this in uh, present tense. Um, I am buying a new car. I am looking forward to this day. Um, we, we could adjust tense that way. So we didn't have to do it in past tense, but because we began the sentence, uh, the first sentence, the first few sentences, we lead that paragraph off with consistent use of past tense. And so really, since most of the items are already phrased in past tense, we can maintain that consistency just by adjusting the items that were not in past tense. Okay, so now we're going to go through some exercises and make tense consistent in the sentence. So the sentence reads, if the club limited its capacity, it will have to raise its cover charge. And here we could change will to would. If, if the club limited its capacity, it would have to raise its cover charge. By the time negotiations began, many pessimists have expressed doubt about them. So we have past tense with began, and then we have have expressed, which is present tense. So we can make that consistent by changing have to had had expressed doubt. So if pessimists had expressed doubt, we are clear that that happened in the past. That's in past tense. Everyone hopes the plan would work. So we can make two changes here. It depends on what tense you would like to use. We can change would to will. Everyone hopes the plan will work. And that would make this present tense, or everyone, um, or we could change, um, hmm, now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that would to will is the only change we can make. Everyone hopes the plan would work. Everyone hopes the plan will work. Yes. So change would to will is the only change uh, that we can make in the sentence. Please ignore this hopes to hope thing. I'm not sure where that came from. All right, so now we'll move on to singular and plural confusion. So in the English language, singular subjects, so she, Bill, car, countertop, things that are singular as subjects, they correspond with singular verbs. Is, goes, shines, jumps, runs, um, but when we have plural subjects, they take plural verbs. So we're going to focus just on the singular subjects and singular verb is, and with plural subjects, the uh, plural verb are. So here's two examples that demonstrate how we see is and are used correctly in simple sentences. The list of items is on the desk. The list is on the desk. So we know that this is a singular item and we paired it with the singular verb is. The players, plural subject, we have more than one player, are warming up for the game. So that's the plural verb are. We wouldn't say the players is warming up for the game. We say the players are. So when we have a plural subject, we have a plural verb, players are. The list is, the players are. So that's how is and er, and are generally function. We can, get lost in whether we use is or are in sentences when um, 
when the sentence is complex. So here we have two sentences using the plural verb and the singular verb. We just need to decide which is correct. So a bouquet of yellow roses lends color and fragrance to the room or a bouquet of yellow roses lends color and fragrance to the room. So think about that for just a second. All right, the second sentence here is correct. So if we look at this subject, the subject is actually a bouquet, singular. But then when we see yellow roses, that's plural, sometimes we think that we need to use the plural verb, which in this case would be lend. But we use lens because the actual subject is singular. A bouquet lends color and fragrance to the room. It doesn't matter that we say of yellow roses, which um, is, a, is a plural subject, because our actual focal subject is bouquet. So this is something that we see in writing, even at the college level, that's very, very easy to confuse. So in your writing, when you have complex sentences and complicated subjects, Make sure that when you go back, you're using um, is and are and singular and plural verbs correctly. Okay, when we have two singular subjects that are connected by um, either or, neither nor, these items are going to require a singular verb. So we have two sentences, one using is, one using are. Neither Tina nor Ellie is available at the moment, or neither Tina nor Ellie are available at the moment. So because we know that these items were using neither and nor, they still require a singular verb, which would be is. So the first sentence you see here is the correct way to write this, since Tina and Ellie the subjects that are in this sentence are connected by neither nor is, is the correct choice. All right, and as a general rule, we use a plural verb with two or more subjects when they are connected by the word and. So looking at these two sentences below, think about which is correct and why. A car and a bike are my main means of transportation. A car and a bike is my main means of transportation. Here we answer with are. The first sentence is correct. So we have singular subjects, but we've joined and combined them by using the word and. So we use the plural verb, are. When we have items that are in and a positive, um, separated by commas, or we use parentheses, um, that doesn't impact the subject that's named outside of the positive or the parentheses. So we have this sentence below, Joe and his trusty mutt was always welcome, Joe and his trusty mutt is always welcome. So we have those two and we decide which is correct and that answer is the second sentence, Joe and his trusty mutt is always welcome. We are excluding from our consideration what is within the parentheses here. And if we had uh, seen the sentence displayed with commas separating that, forming a positive with the words and his trusty mutt, the answer would still be the same. Joe is always welcome is the simplified form of the sentence. When we take the parenthetical reference out, when we don't consider um, the text that is formed in the positive, then we still will form the, um, we will determine whether the verb is singular or plural based on the other contents of the sentence, not what's in parentheses, not what is in the positive. Okay, so determine if this sentence is correct as it's been written. There are four hurdles to jump. This sentence is correct. So hurdles is plural, and so we correspond uh, the plural verb are uh, in this sentence. Here are the keys to grandma's car. This is also correct. So we have keys, plural, to be paired with the plural verb are. The politician, along with the newsmen, are expected shortly. And we would use is here. So we have the politician and then we have an appositive with the words along with the newsmen, which we are instructed to ignore in terms of determining whether 
the, uh, the verb should be singular or plural. So the politician is singular. So we should have that correspond with the singular verb is expected shortly. We're ignoring the part about the newsmen because a politician and newsmen would form a plural. But since that information is displayed in an appositive, we ignore that and use the singular verb just to correspond with politician here in this sentence. A two-step and a foxtrot is my favorite styles of ballroom dance. And this is also incorrect. So here we have two singular subjects, two-step and foxtrot. But we've joined them with the word and. So we've formed a, we've really formed a plural subject. Uh, a plural subject is implied by the use of and. And so we will also use a plural verb to correspond with that. So we would use are in place of is here. A two-step and a foxtrot are my favorite styles. Here's another indicator that this is plural of ballroom dance. Either freezing temperatures or a faulty seal is the cause of the pipe burst. So here we're using either or. And so we have freezing temperatures or a faulty seal. So we are not joining these to form a, um, a plural subject. These are still singular subjects, and so we still apply is in the sentence. And that is Grammar Lecture 9. So as always, please let me know if you have any questions, if I can clarify anything before you take the quiz, and I hope everyone has a great week.